Hey there, everyone, and welcome back to Utility Sports. What a crazy day in the sports world. Of course, the NBA draft did just conclude. Uh, awesome getting to see all 60 picks, the, the lives of 60 individuals getting changed forever. Uh, and hopefully you guys did enjoy watching it as well. If you were able to tune in, we have a bunch of other videos on the channel with our grades, reactions uh, as well. So go give, that a uh, go give those a look as well after this video. And make sure you guys are subscribed for more NBA draft content. We actually are going to have a 2022 NBA mock draft dropping uh, right away too with this process. So there's going to be a lot for you guys to catch up on with the winners, losers, and locks here in this video. Let's jump into it, Austin, now uh, with some of the locks. And what I mean by this are teams that necessarily shouldn't be considered winners because of where they were with the draft position. Of course, the team with the first overall pick is going to have a better draft than a team drafting 10th overall, for example. But as a lock, I think that they did what they had to do uh, and did a really good job securing what they needed to do on draft night. So the second team of the two I have is the Cleveland Cavaliers. Of course, Austin, they picked Evan Mobley third overall. Talk, what does he bring to the Cleveland Cavaliers with or without Jared Allen? This is a guy who's tremendous defensively, really moves his feet well, but he's an elite rim protector, a guy that can truly be an anchor defensively. He has some shooting potential as well. Hopefully he can stretch out and be a, a consistent three-point shooter. The Cleveland Cavaliers really need another big man, and we'll see what they decide to do with Jared Allen, considering he is a restricted free agent this offseason. So a lot to like about what the Cavaliers did, obviously getting Evan Mobley at number three. I think that you know, this is a pretty good uh, scenario for them, considering that they get a guy with immense potential. Right. Talking about locks, Evan Mobley defensively is one of the safest locks in this draft. He's going to be a phenomenal defender in the NBA. He's going to be great in the pick and roll defensively. And like you said, really protects the rim well. I think the Cavaliers are a lot better today uh, with Mobley on their roster. Then the other lock here in this video is, of course, the Detroit Pistons. Not only did they grab Kate Cunningham first overall, the best player in this year's class, but I think they really supplemented him well with their other assets as well, Austin. They went and grabbed Herb Jones, 35th overall, and Luka Garza, 52nd overall. I know there's going to be a little bit of controversy around Luka Garza. Why are these such good complementary pieces around Cade? Yeah, obviously Herb Jones is definitely a guy you can re rely on defensively. He's a really good athlete, a guy that really gets after it defensively uh, at the wing spot. And Luca Garza, obviously the best college player from a statistical standpoint this past season. He shot 44% from three, a guy that can really stretch out to that three-point line. And he's just a talented scorer in general. There's questions, obviously, about his, his quickness and how heavy-footed he is. And really defensively, he's not an impact player. However, there is value still in taking a guy like this at 52. I mean, the I think he's really hit his ceiling as a player. However, he's going to be a talented scorer off the bench for this Detroit Piston team. Right. You're looking at someone who could, you know, maybe get utilized in the post. If there's a, a screen heavy or a switch heavy defense that you're facing, you could feed him the ball. And he's also dropped quite a bit of weight since he last played for the Iowa Hawkeyes. I think he's going to be a player who comes in with improved mobility and back to the Herb Jones selection. I absolutely love what he brings to this Detroit Pistons lineup. He's going to be a great fit next to Sadiq Bay. You're looking at two guys who can really defend both on and off ball, but he also gives you a little bit of a different dynamic offensively, very comfortable slashing, comfortable acting as a pseudo point forward in a lot of roles. I think that he brings a nice dynamic where Kate Cunningham maybe gets to play off the ball a little bit still in Detroit, where you have Killian Hayes, Herb Jones, a couple of playmakers around him. It's an interesting dynamic in Detroit, and I think they did a very good job on draft night. So that leads us into some teams who maybe didn't necessarily make the moves that they had to on draft night, or maybe put themselves in a little bit of an interesting situation uh, just in general, the first one here that we have is the Minnesota Timberwolves. They had zero picks in the draft, which is a little tough because it's a young team. They had to make some improvements. And I also think that they overpaid in a trade for Torian Prince today, giving up Ricky Rubio, cash considerations, and a 2022 second round pick. Gershon Rosas has been very aggressive with his draft pick capital, moving them uh, ahead in the future. That's why they didn't have any picks tonight. And again, they're already threading or thinning themselves out Four picks in the future, Austin. What do you think about Minnesota? Yeah, unfortunately, I think they definitely needed to have some picks in this draft to improve their roster, especially heading into the next season. Obviously, they were uber aggressive in moving those selections, and now they sat with no picks. They didn't get better tonight, and they're going to have to really rely on free agency to, to target key areas. Uh, unfortunately for them, they did not have the draft pick capital that they needed to go into this draft with, and they didn't really move in. I mean, they definitely could have done what a couple of other teams did and pay cash for some of these second round picks, which I think that would have been worthwhile for them. Right. I think so as well. You're looking at a team who, of course, they didn't get worse today, 
but they did not get better. And they're a team I thought that had to get better this off season. Uh, they still have free agency, but we'll see. And also the other team that we had as a loser was the Memphis Grizzlies, which might come as a surprise to some of you. Cause I know Zaire Williams does have a lot of fan support. Uh, and I think he's a very intriguing player. Austin, you even like Zaire Williams, but just the route that they took to get Zaire Williams was not really a good one. They ended up having to take in Steven Adams, Eric Bledsoe to do so. And even the New Orleans Pelicans arguably took a better player at 17 where the Grizzlies were originally slated to be in Trey Murphy. So you're just looking at a tough situation where you take in a lot of salary cap uh, hit with Steven Adams, Eric Bledsoe. You get a player who's really risky, does fill the need that they have as a perimeter score if it pans out, but there's a real potential here that it does not. And then at pick 30, I feel like this was a wasted pick with Santi Aldama. Uh, just doesn't really uh, translate as a guy who I think is going to have a big NBA impact. Uh, and you're looking at the Grizzlies being a real question mark team for me this offseason now. Uh, I'd honestly give this a, a D draft just because I think Zary Williams does have potential. But the means of getting there, I just don't think necessarily worked out too well for them. Austin, what's your thoughts on Zaire? Yeah, definitely. I like Zaire Williams as a prospect. I think he has tremendous upside. However, we have to look at the pathway of how they ended up selecting him. And you could definitely make the argument at 17, they could have stayed and selected him or even possibly traded back a little bit and picked up draft capital. However, they definitely make a questionable decision and move up to number 10 to take Zaire Williams. Definitely a talented scorer, a guy who has a pretty high ceiling. However, he also could really, really struggle at the next level and become a guy that's not entirely playable. Uh, that's just what happens with some of these high upside guys that you know maybe they aren't going to be as willing to take a role on a team if it doesn't work out for them being a primary scorer. One key thing to talk about this draft as well, it was hard to pick losers for us in this year's draft. It's such a good, deep, nice draft class that there weren't really that many losers. Memphis was really the only one we felt strongly about. And of course, the Timberwolves then not having a pick, not improving their roster tonight did hurt them as well, in our opinion. Uh, the Grizzlies really the only sole loser at this point. Otherwise, every other team we felt at least did uh, average to really good. And well, let's get into some of those teams that did really good here, Austin, with the winners, the Golden State Warriors at four. Break down what happened with them tonight. Yeah, pick number seven, Jonathan Kaminga was the selection. Uh, it was thought he might not be available for them, but he ended up being there. This is a guy that has great scoring potential, a really nice wing player. Um, we have uh, on this channel talked about how he has potential to be a guy like Paul George. It's going to take a lot of development. He's really going to have to work on his shot, but he has the potential and the frame to get there. Moses Moody, another guy who definitely fills the need for them, a two guard, a guy that can score in the mid range. He can shoot the three ball a little bit. He's going to need a little bit of work on that. He's not a consistent three point shooter. Um, however, his uh, percentages will say so. But overall, I really like this draft by getting Moses Moody and Kaminga. Yeah, you're looking at the Warriors, a team that, you know, was really focused on trade negotiations throughout this process. It seemed like they were pretty much involved in every single trade rumor around the league. They ended up staying put with both seven and 14 and did phenomenal jobs there. This is uh, an A minus to an A draft. It kind of hinges on Kaminga's development where it could end up becoming. But if he reaches his potential, you're looking at the Warriors staying very, very relevant with James Wiseman, Jonathan Kaminga, and Moses Moody for the future. I love this not only for the now, but also for the future in Golden State. The next team we have as a winner is actually a surprise winner here for the night. They came in with only the 25th overall pick, but were very active throughout the night uh, using some of Steve Ballmer's pocket money here. They ended up moving up to pick 21 to get Keon Johnson. 33, they grabbed Jason Preston. And 51, they took a big swing on a development project in BJ Boston. Austin, break down how these fit into the Clippers roster now and for the future. Yeah, so Keon Johnson is a guy that definitely fell. A lot of people felt strongly that he was going to be a lottery pick just with his athletic projection, 48-inch vertical, which is, was a combine record. We had mentioned that before. But Keon Johnson, a guy that can definitely get to the cup uh, his shot is very, very suspect at this point in his career. However, that's part of the reason why he fell to 21. Uh, Clippers, who were sitting at 25, felt the need to jump up to 21. So they ended up paying to, to do so. However, it really worked out for them. Very likely he went to last into 25. Jason Preston, a guy that uh, Sheldon's talked a little bit on the channel about being a playmaker, a guy that can actually shoot the three ball as well. Um, this is also what the Clippers need on that second unit. They need a guy that can really play make uh, effectively, and that's what Jason Preston brings. And he's really just starting to tap into his potential, considering he hasn't you know, played at a high level um, of college basketball for very long. And then finally, B.J. Boston, a guy that was a top seven recruit coming out of high school. Uh, at the very start of the year, even ESPN thought he was going to be a top five selection. So 
Uh, a lot of things didn't go right for B.J. Boston at Kentucky. However, he's going to be in a really, really, really good situation with the Clippers. There's no pressure. He's going to play in the G League for quite some time. And this is a guy that could be a home run selection at 51. Right. When you're looking at grading NBA draft classes, how a team does during the NBA draft, you have to look at and really consider two things, value and fit. And I think the Clippers nailed it in both of those regards tonight. Keon Johnson was ranked, I believe, 14th on my big board. Austin, top 14 on yours as well, I know. Grabbing him 21st overall is phenomenal value here. Jason Preston, I had 29th on my board. So you grab him a little bit after value. Aggressive move to go up and get him. And uh, you really got a guy who I think fits well there. Keon Johnson, you talked about his dynamism, ability to get to the cup and the athletic nature he plays with. That's been missing from this Clippers offense ever since they traded Shea Gilgis Alexander. Uh, ever since they brought in Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, they need someone else who gets to the rim consistently. Keon Johnson does that. Preston's kind of that playmaking point guard that they tried to figure out with Rajon Rondo. It just hasn't worked to the point where he hasn't gotten playoff minutes. So I think that long-term Jason Preston kind of fits into that mold. And then 51, BJ Boston. They don't own a lot of their picks. So you have a guy who could maybe develop into a star player. I don't necessarily think that's going to happen, but there is that potential for him more so than any other guy taken in the 50s tonight. And I think for only having to give up cash to get this asset and a shot at him being a build around player for the future, not having assets down the road, this is something I think the Clippers needed to take a shot on. And I'm so happy for this franchise that they did. Big time winners tonight. I would give this an A grade for the night. Second best team tonight was the Charlotte Hornets. Again, talking about fit and value. This team did it. James Booknight, Kai Jones, JT Thor. Austin, break down this collection of assets around LaMelo Ball. Yeah, definitely James Booknight's a phenomenal fit for the Charlotte Hornets at this point. Definitely a guy that has that shot creating ability. He's going to work on his three point shot. He only shot about 30% from three uh, during the college season, but tremendous athlete, a guy with tremendous upside. Uh, definitely a guy that people thought was not going to last until 11. That was not. Uh, people thought at eight was going to be the selection. Uh, Kai Jones, another guy that flashes some athleticism. Uh, he can develop into a very nice center. And for Charlotte, uh, just having a guy that can rim run the way that Kai Jones does, um, definitely think that that's a high upside selection as well. And then JT Thor, another guy that's very, very raw. However, he does flash some athleticism. Um, definitely a guy that could improve laterally. However, um, vertically speaking, he, he's pretty dynamic that way. So overall, I really like it. A lot of potential here. Uh, at the same time, it's very risky. However, they did a really nice job filling some of those team needs, especially at center and a guy to play play alongside and be a true scorer that James Booknight can be. Right. You're looking at Booknight being an A-plus fit next to LaMelo Ball. This is one of the picks that I actually mocked in the final mock draft, and I fell in love with this fit. I was praying at pick 11 that James Booknight would be the selection for them, and they did exactly what they needed to do. Mitch Kupchak did a phenomenal job in this year's draft. Also brought in Mason Plumlee to solve the center issue. Kai Jones really uh, transcends well as a four combo five into the NBA. And I think JT Thor coming off the bench gives you a nice floor spacing option. Very, very good draft here for the Charlotte Hornets. An A grade uh, here for me as well for the Hornets tonight. Bringing us to our biggest winner. And I think this is the obvious big winner for a lot of people around the league. Austin, that's the Houston Rockets. We see Jalen Green, Alperen Shangun in a trade up with the Oklahoma City Thunder. Usman Garuba and Josh Christopher are also the selections. Four picks in the top 24. That's almost unheard of. Breakdown Rockets draft tonight. Yeah, the Rockets did very well. Obviously, they went in with arguably the most to, to kind of wheel and deal, and they came out with tremendous talent. Jalen Green being the second best player, they did not mess up that selection. He is going to be a star in the league. Shane Goon's another guy with high upside, very, very skilled at that center spot. Has to really work on that three-pointer. Um, otherwise, I mean, he's just a very, very uh, complete prospect, offensively speaking. Uh, Garuba, a guy that's a high potential defensive player, uh, offensively, he has some things to work on. However, Houston has not been afraid to have some guys that with great defense, but lack offensive game. And then finally, Josh Christopher is a guy that can really shock create um, definitely uh, three level scoring potential for sure with him. I think his numbers will uh, actually translate a little better at the NBA level than he did in college. I just think there is a couple of things that he has to work out, but high scoring potential with Josh Christopher at 24. Right. When anytime you're coming away from a draft where you arguably grab two of the top five scoring uh, players in this class and Jalen Green, Alperen Shangun, 
uh, possibly a third top 10 scorer from this class in Josh Christopher, and then arguably the best defensive player in this year's class in Usman Garuba. You have to feel really good about yourself. GM Raphael Stone absolutely killed it in this draft. I'm glad he was aggressive, moved up for that 16th pick. It was obvious they needed to make uh, a move for that front court. When Christian Wood went down last year, they went 0 20 in that 20 game stretch. They needed to improve the front court. They did immensely with Alpren Shangun and Usman Garuba, while also grabbing in dynamic guard talent with Green and Christopher. You're looking at a really, really fun young team. You're looking at four potential starters down the road for the Houston Rockets. Really, really good draft for them. A-plus grade all around, even arguably an A-plus plus grade. Uh, if Jalen Green en ends up being as uh, dynamic and as, and as elite as I think he could be, you're looking at the massive winner of the draft tonight, the Houston Rockets. Hopefully you guys did enjoy the winners, losers, and locks video here. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up. Also subscribe for more content here at Utility Sports. Let us know in the comments. Who is your big winner and who is your big loser from the draft tonight? We'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on it. Again, check out our other videos on the channel and we'll catch you in the very next one.